Hi, we're back over at Acorn Acres and we're going to be doing something in the apiary today, so stay tuned. I'm your host Jerry Hansen and this is Acorn Acres. Today we're in the apiary and we're going to be feeding the bees and I believe setting out pollen. Ken, uh, my partner that is in uh, partnership with me on the beekeeping, he's on his way over and we're going to be doing this. So let's see what's happening. Judging from the scat on the ground and uh, what happened to the bee feeder over there, it looks like a, a herd of elk that frequent these meadows here. Kind of got a taste of the, got curious with the bee feeder, so. Bummer. Ken just arrived, so we'll get, fig we'll figure this out. Okay, this is August 1st, uh, 2016. And up here in this valley, it uh, appears that the bees aren't carrying back much pollen or nectar, so. We're now officially in the, the dearth, so Ken's going to go ahead and set the bees up with uh, some nectar and we're going to feed them some uh, bee pollen or pollen patties uh, so they'll get plenty of pollen and nutrients and ingredients to make that honey uh, to help them through the winter. Kim is prepping the pollen patties. Do you, uh, can you tell us what the basic ingredients in those pollen patties are? I know they have some pro health, so a bunch of vitamins and things for bees, but the, the main part, I believe, is a concoction to uh, something similar to the type of syrup we feed them. You know, a more solid form. Kim may do a, a more of the detailed ingredients. It's very sticky. Ken, what's in those pollen patties? No idea. This is a professional. This is from Man Lakes. Man Lakes, okay. Man Lakes is their Ultra Pro uh, formula. Okay. So it's protein and pollen. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen no activity out of that red hive since yeah, we've no, been here. Uh, the dark green, yellow, and light green are uh, look very active. Now okay. yeah, you're going to go do a in hive inspection. Take a peek see if they've gotten any bigger since their last visit. I'm worried about that red one. What if it's not? That's all this red hive has. So my guess is there is no queen. There are no babies, no larva. So the volume of the bees are really loud, which probably means they're also queen moles. So we'll move this frame over into this hive and see what happens. Do you want your gloves? I'm covered in syrup, so hopefully they won't eat me. What Ken's doing is taking two uh, frames that are being drawn out by the bees that occupy this first hive here, and he's going to be combining those bees who are queenless over to a queen hive so they can be more productive. 
and he'll show how he integrates the two colonies. So the red box is pretty much a dead box at this time. There's probably 200 bees in there, but they're queenless, so this hive is officially dead. All right, I'll take the pollen patty. You want to come over and listen to this hive? Yeah, you might be able to tell the difference in volume. Oh, yeah. right, so this is a nice quieter hive. Serve the noise. Kim, you flew to Georgia and spent some time with Fat Bee Man. Learned a few things from him, didn't you? I learned a lot of things from him. How to uh, make your own wax frames. How to uh, take a very small, small baseball of, hot, of bees with a queen and one or two frames is all you need to start a new hive. He had so many different small. He's into five frame nukes, very small. So he can move them and sell them quickly. He, um, is able to use all the honey, uh, the wax over again and has the ability to get brand new wax which is used for high-end cosmetics. It sells for over 200 and some dollars a pound. And then the older wax he just keeps melting down and making new wax frames from. Him and his son have been working together and they have these giant feeders on the back of a truck and they automatically feed like with a water tank. That's how many bees they have. And, his bees are quite mellow. They never wear any protection. I could pet their queens. <laughs> it was uh, very interesting to see how mellow the bees were in birth. Again, they only have this much pulled. But you see all those cells, those are all drone cells. So this is a hive that's laying, this has a laying worker bee. Worker bee. So this hive is also a no good hive. Queenless. Queenless. So I'm going to take this and we're going to dump them out over here. So what that'll do is all the foragers will come back to the hive. The worker queen has never left the hive, she'll never make it back. So the birds will get here and hopefully the foragers will come back. There's a better picture of the drone cells made by a lane worker queen. So that is what you don't want in your beekeeping apiary. Correct. So this was a swarm we caught. Queen obviously didn't make it. So they decided to make a lane worker queen. And a worker queen, a worker bee, is not inseminated to lay worker bees. A worker bee uh, lays unfertilized eggs and those unfertilized eggs still develop into a bee, but those are male bees that they develop into uh, called drones. And drones' sole purpose is to hang around the hive and smoke cigarettes until it's time to go out and mate with a queen. Finally, we got a queen. We have a queen because we've got worker cells right there. We. So I will take a pollen patty on this one. Now, what is the purpose of laying a pollen patty on the top of the frames? Um, the bees usually put their food on the roof or in the highest place that they've worked on. So if I put it on top, it mimics their natural, their natural process of food. And for lack of pollen availability and nectar availability, that's why you're supplementing their diet with pollen. And we also want stronger hives going into winter, and the pollen is what use the queen to make more bees. So we want lots of bees in here when the weather gets cold and turns to winter time. Here we go. Now it goes to the truck. So this
this is a frame out of the yellow hive. They actually tried to make a queen cell out of this one. I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's a larva in there. Um, but it's too late because that will be a non or an unfertilized larva, so they'll never turn into a queen. Ever. It won't be a female. It will not be a female. They tried, but it won't do them any good because this is all drum brood. So it'll be a transgendered. Exactly. Yeah. So this completes our August visit to the apiary and bee inspections here at the uh, apiary at Acorn Acres. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Uh, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.